Everybody's talking about augmented reality, AR. You agree? This is the next big thing? Um, you know, everybody, I, I think I hear more people talking about VR. Well, uh, I think you're reality. wrong on VR because I've tried it and it's boring. <laughs> well, okay. It's so a we, gaming technology. Yeah, so I agree with you. Um, Good. But I, for a slightly different reason. So oh, okay. I, I especially see everybody in news, um, you know, moving moving to VR is like the next big platform that they can monetize. And the challenge is if you stop and think about when you would use VR and when we consume news, even yeah. fabulous news video or documentary style video, <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to ride the subway in New York right. uh, with, a, with like like wired in. With <laughs> it was it was interesting out. when the New York Times distributed Google Cardboard and they did those uh, t t uh, tales of, of children refugees of war it was it was very interesting, but you didn't I didn't see a future for that. It was it, it's too hard. Right. I mean, I think it makes sense for entertainment verticals. So, right. um, you know, and and I got to play with this very, very cool experimental, uh, it was it was a Sony experiment, but basically you wear a augmented reality, or I'm sorry, you wear a VR head mounted display, but you actually see the real world. Um, and you see, you do this with three other people and you see their perspective. So you, you wind up with a split screen of the real world that's around you, but you see your perspective and their perspectives as well. That sounds so that disorienting. <laughs> Uh, it was for a couple seconds, but then I, I spent a lot of You're time playing computer games. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, but it, you know, I, that, and that is probably already being used in warfare, I would think. Sure. Uh, that makes sense. But, you know, from practical applications, you know, th there are different ways to think about, about VR, but AR has many, many, many more practical yeah. applications. Yeah. Um, you know, and it doesn't require, uh, and, and what's fascinating to me is, you know, so AR, VR got its start um, as a therapeutic um, technology for people suffering from PTSD. So that's where VR right. originated. And it has worked very well in that sphere. That's right. Yeah. And AR originated um, inside of a factory. People w were hand drawing these blueprints um, and in the 90s. And just got to a point where wouldn't it be easier for us to just overlay changes so we're not constantly having to redraw stuff? Um, so, so they started out with very different uses, but, and we've gone through lots of different iterations, mostly with our phones. I think once we have an environment where we don't have to hold a device up to see that AR overlay, but instead it's just part of our glasses or a contact lens, um, you know, we'll, we'll start to see greater integration. But so again, people who blew off Pokemon Go as just flash in the pan and, you know, Nintendo's, you know, and, and the various players trying to stay relevant or whatever. Um, to me, that was an important moment because it reintroduced AR and reminded people, oh, this is a, a way that we can use our devices. That's exactly what I said. It was a wedge application yeah. for AR. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I played it like incessantly for about six months and then got sick of it. Uh, <laughs> so Apple, you know, everybody's saying, oh, it's going to be Apple's, which is fun. Apple is so funny because Apple is coasting on purely on reputation at this point because no one knows anything about Apple's AR plans. It's just, well, if it's Apple, it must be great. Like, oh, well, they'll, they'll, they'll figure this one out. And I'm not convinced, frankly, that uh, I don't know who's going to figure this out. Is Mag you talk about Magic Leap in the book a little bit. Yeah. And again, so Magic Leap is another one of those hugely controversial companies because we haven't seen, you know, yeah. there are talk about valuation and investments and money raised, and we haven't seen a device yet. Um, again, so this this brings up a good point, which is there's, some, there's such a thing as, as basic research. Basic research is not research that's being done in pursuit of a single product. It's being done for the pursuit of knowledge. And I, and I believe that that is how they got their start. It, it had to do with, um, can we pursue some completely different way of overlaying information? Um, and I, you know, that's why I think you haven't seen a product sprint and, you know, um, why, why maybe we haven't seen anything yet. And the founders have been a little elusive and sometimes, you know, silly. Um, there was a famous TEDx <laughs> presentation where they pretended like they were walking on the moon you know so there's been some some theater and, and there's also, yeah there's been some uh theater is a good description i mean it's almost deceptive that's right but i will tell you having read 
uh, with a fine tooth comb all of their patents and um, followed very closely some of the things that they're trying to build and work on. You know, it takes it's too expensive and it takes too long um, to write that stuff and to file it and to go through all the paperwork and the hassle for them to not be serious about what they're building. So, uh, you know. Yes, I think that's fair. Yeah. It's clear they're serious. Absolutely. Whether they'll be able to do it is another matter. But they, that's right. But they've, again, they've, they're, they're shooting. It's a moonshot. So good. Let's have right. more moonshots. Nothing wrong with that. That's right. And in a sense, it sort of doesn't matter whether or not they're successful because right. – um, everybody, you know, lots of people have read those patents. It only matters the, if you're one of the investors. It's not. Well, that, that or an <laughs> but employee. But we're not. Or an employee, but we're but not. No, and if you're taking this longer view, right. um, you can see how those, how, how those patents have started to influence what other, other people are working on. And that's, so it's, it's observing those relationships versus, you know, and, and the same thing for Google Glass, um, which I used to have sitting right over here. Everybody loves to hate on Google Glass. Um, you know, and it was probably an ill-fated uh, commercial product from the get-go. But what does Google, what, you know, what did Google Glass um, do? It ignited interest in a whole bunch of startups who wanted to do something better, right? It also bridged a relationship between technology and lens providers like Essilor. Yep. Um, you know, and the future of AI doesn't just involve tech companies. It involves the companies that make this glass. We will uh, absolutely look back at Google Glass and said that was a foundational technology for what has happened since. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, as much as, as we and, and I mocked it, I bought it, but uh, I mocked it. Uh, but, it was but it was clear that there was important work here. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that this is your perspective is very different uh, and, and very valuable, I think. You're not betting on a horse. You're betting on the race. You're not mm -hmm. saying that Magic Leap's going to win, but you're going to say, but there is a very important race happening in its augmented reality. That's yes. right. And if you're carefully observing the race and you uh, and you, you, you have a good book and you've got the right information, um, you know, it's great. You, you will then know if, you know, if that horse is going to take off anyways, because right. you will be observing everything in a different right. way.